This is AB Calculus, section 2.1, Rates of Change, page 9. We are going to talk about the sandwich or the squeeze theorem. The sandwich or the squeeze theorem, what this thing does is that it finds the limit of ugly functions. Functions where we can't just plug in, where we can't rationalize, we can't uh, factor, it's not one of our memorized trig limits, there's just, we're really struck, we don't know what to do. So if we look at what this says, if g of x is less than or equal to f of x, is less than or equal to h of x, for all x not equal to c, in some interval about c, and if the limit as x approaches c of g of x is equal to l, and the limit as x approaches c of h of x is equal to l, then the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to l. My goodness, reading that makes you want your makes your head want to explode. It's really not that difficult of a concept, but the wording and the mathematical symbols in here make this very difficult to kind of sort through. So let's see if we can figure this out. First of all, these three functions are all occurring for some x equals c in, or not c, but in some interval. So let's put some c value on here and some interval around there. So our drawing is going to go beyond this, these endpoint and ending intervals here, but we're only going to be interested in that section in here. Okay, so we have some g of x. We'll call that some nice function. And if we put this g of x in here, let's just draw it very nice. There's some g of x. Or a nice function. Now, we do notice that the limit as x approaches c of g of x is equal to l. So right here where that g of x maxes out, it happens to max out, it wouldn't have to necessarily max out, but that limit as x approaches c is some l. Now when we put some h of x in here, h of x is this one up here, no, that's another nice function, and notice that it is greater than g of x, so on this plane it has to be above g of x, we also know that the limit as x approaches c of h also is l. So we have to draw some h that's above g that happens to have this very same limit. And let's draw something very nice. How about this? Now it can do something over there, it doesn't matter. But what matters is that this h of x is one above g of x and, at least on this particular interval, and that it has the same limit as x approaches c. The only function we haven't dealt with here now is f of x. And f of x is the ugly function that we're trying to get the limit of. And notice f of x is between g of x and h of x. So when we try and draw f of x in here, no matter what kind of function it is, no matter how ugly it is, notice it has to squeeze in between g and h. And it is that ugly function that is trapped between two nice functions. So if that ugly one is sitting in between these two nice functions, and these two nice functions both have the same limit as x approaches c, well then of course this ugly function has to have the same limit because it's sitting between them. That's the concept behind that squeeze theorem. Let's take a look at an example. We want to find the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared sine 1 over x. And this in here is our ugly function. because we can't substitute in x equals zero. If we put in x equals zero here, that's fine, zero. But we can't evaluate this sign because we can't do sine of one over zero, sine of something that's undefined. So that is our ugly function. 
And our goal here is going to be to get this ugly function trapped between two nice functions. All right, now to start this, we could say that the sine of anything, and if you think back to the unit circle, oops, I lost my n in here, and I don't have any white out on me, I'm sorry. Um, no, I don't. Um, the sine of anything, not fig, anything, has to be between negative 1 and 1. Think back to the unit circle. The sine, or y coordinate of any point on the unit circle, is between negative 1 and 1. Which means then, we know the sine of 1 over x must be between negative 1 and 1. All right, now. This is where we want our ugly function to be, just like it was up here in the middle between two nice functions. So we have these two nice here, and we want the ugly one here. But if we look back, our ugly one also had this x squared. So to make this piece look entirely like that, we're going to have to multiply by x squared. So x squared sine of 1 over x. Well, if we multiply the middle by x squared, we have to multiply the outsides by x squared. And there we have it. Here's some nice function. Here's another nice function. And here's this nasty, ugly function that is trapped between two nice functions. The only thing that's left to do is to figure out if those two functions have the same limit as x approaches 0. So we check the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x squared. Plug in the 0. That is 0. Check over here the limit of this other nice function as x approaches 0. The limit of x squared as x approaches 0. That's also 0. Hint. These two have to be the same. If they're not the same, you did something wrong. Then the squeeze theorem is not going to work for you. These two limits have to be the same because you're wanting this ugly function trapped between two nice functions which happen to have the same limit. Therefore, we can say the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared sine 1 over x is also equal to 0 by the squeeze theorem. We got this ugly function trapped between two nice functions that happen to have the same limit as x approaches 0. Therefore, this nasty one had the same limit. Okay, thank you very much. Page 10 has been left blank intentionally, so there are uh, there is no video for page 10.